So there are many reasons to get into watches, but I think one of the leading, I would say reasons people have a ton of affinity for watches is their ability to kind of be an extension of your own personality and kind of show some unique flair. Now you could do this in a variety of different ways. One could be with like a complication, maybe a certain brand, but I think an obvious one is with the color of the dial and what it's projecting out on your wrist. Now things can get pretty crazy in this arena of colorful dials. So today I wanted to look at just some of my favorites or some of the ones that you should look at in 2021. In the video, I'm not going to be able to include every single colorful dial out there. These are just ones that I think leave an impression are a bit different and I think are probably some good ones to look at. In this video, we're gonna kind of go in general ascending order for the most part. There might be a few things flipped around, but gonna be looking at a variety of different price ranges and some dials that I think really do deliver uh, when it comes to maybe catching some attention in all the right ways. And before we jump into this video, we do have quite a few new releases on teddybaldasar.com. Probably one of my favorites right now is the Zenith Chronomaster, the A386. New cases, these are now standard production models. Very excited about it. A variety of different dial colors to choose from. You have the traditional tri-register display that I think many people find synonymous with the El Primero, as well as an all black reverse panda style. And then also the Tissot C-Star Professional as well. Check them out, teddybaldasar.com. So now to begin, I wanna first look at Bulova with the Chrono A. Now this is a model that really pulls from the 1970s in terms of a design from their archive. During this period, there was quite a few different just takes on the chronograph from Bulova uh, during the period. Now a few of the famous creations during this period were the Stars and Stripes, but also looking at the surfboard models, uh, basically just the layout of the registers and that filled out type of colored uh, some central surface of the dial that really give these watches their name. Now, in terms of the splash of color here, it's not as straightforward as maybe some of the other ones, but I think the combination of colors is really what makes this one shine quite a bit. Now, there are a few different variants in terms of colors, as well as two different options in terms of a movement. And that is going to substantially change the price and kind of the range in which you're looking at. We're talking hundreds of dollars, versus being north of $2,000. So just kind of keep that in mind. Also, the quartz versions are going to have that nice high frequency. So you're gonna get some nice accuracy in the process here. And you're also gonna be getting a very nice price tag at the end of the day. Now, next up here, we have Seiko. And Seiko, as probably many of you know, is going to be a great brand to look at if you're looking for some colorful, fun dials in the safe, $1,000 price range and under. I think even above that, they have some great options as well. But today we're just gonna be looking at two of them. First is gonna be with the SRPF53. This is a model we've covered on the channel before. It's kind of this a little bit more subdued in terms of a color, I would say, but not with the texturized surface that also is reflective in the actual applied markers on this watch as well. I've never really seen this before in a watch of this price category, and it's really cool from a texturized just approach. It has a little bit more of an unconventional case size and just kind of proportions compared to some other other Seiko watches within the Presage collection. But in terms of that dial, it is really good at drawing attention without maybe doing it in an ostentatious way. And another watch I wanna look at here is a recent creation from Seiko with the Seiko 5 SRPH19. Now this watch is notable for a couple reasons. One's gonna be that kind of Pogue style color dial. It's gonna kind of have that champagne or yellow kind of just shine to it. And then also getting a Pepsi bezel. It's a little bit of an oddball, but this was actually created as a kind of collaborative effort with Seiko enthusiasts that were actually able to vote on a bunch of different designs. And this is really what they came up with. So I thought that was kind of cool. At the end of the day, it's just another Seiko 5 Sports that we've seen quite a bit of in the last couple of years, but a different one and certainly one that grabs a little bit more attention. Now, so far, we've looked at some watches that are a bit more restrained in terms of their approach and color. I promise it'll start scaling up from here, but this is the last one. I would say it's a bit more understated uh, compared to some of the other colors, and that is with the Hamilton Intramatic Champagne. Now, this is a watch that has a ton of just 1960s design influences. It does have printed markers in an intramatic format that is very familiar uh, with the lack of a second hand, which some people like, some people don't like. It comes in at 38 millimeters and again, pretty expected if you are familiar with this range, but what is not expected is that champagne dial and it works really well with this format. I would say, honestly, it's kind of champagne, but it also has this kind of a copper tone uh, look to it, maybe even more so. You could even say it looks somewhat salmon in, in many instances as well in certain lighting conditions. I just think this thing looks great. I think it creates a nice just combination with the 1960s vibe that this dial just projects out and seeing it with this color and pairing, I think it just works really well. Now, so far in 2021, the official color in the world of watches that is, is green, no question about it. 
But there were brands that were sampling with this color certainly before this year started. And one of those was Mula Glassuta with the Panova Green. Now this is a watch that I would say is a bit more out there in terms of its approach to green. You also have some combination with secondary colors of orange. This is a bit of a funky looking watch, but it is well constructed. That sunburst effect looks great. And in terms of value, I think this is a pretty compelling package for a variety of reasons. Mila Glassuta as a brand is a family owned operation over five different generations and is actually based in Glassuta, Germany, as you might expect. But their history really starts in the world of motorcycle speedometers. They were making it for the likes of BMW. Also their work in marine chronometers. But since the 1990s, they've really delved into the world of wristwatches and have really carved out a nice niche in the category. In terms of this watch, it's a bit different than the standardized type of watches that they're creating, but I think that adds to their charm. And then also in terms of their price range is going to be pretty much the most attainable option you're gonna find for this brand. You're also getting a Salita base movement inside of here, but what Mula is doing with all their movements is actually deconstructing these and then putting them back together with their proprietary woodpecker neck regulator. So pretty cool to see that as well. It's gonna help with shock, help with fine tuning adjustment and regulation. So nice tool watch, very interesting dial color and certainly different than what you're gonna see out there on the market. Now, when one thinks of colorful dials, I think one of the first brands that springs to mind is the world of Doxa. Now, Doxa, unlike some brands that dive into the world, no pun intended, dive into the world of these colored dials, are actually doing it with intention. Now, back when they were testing out these different colorful dials, they were doing it with really legibility in mind when you're dealing with murky underwater environments. Now, the most notable one is probably their Orange Professional. That is really the kind of flagship for the brand. Now, I wanna look at the Doxa Sub 200s though, because they're a bit more obtainable. I would say they have a bit more mass market appeal compared to the Sub 300s, because those are a little bit more tool watch oriented, and I don't think everybody could pull those off the same way as I think a Sub 200 could be pulled off. Uh, but these are just great watches for around thousand dollars. You have a variety of different dial colors to choose from. Doxa in terms of their diving pedigree is top class and really hard to beat in terms of what they're packaging together here. And I think these are just fun. The loom on these do unfortunately leave a bit to be desired, but overall I think the package is compelling and Doxa as a brand, certainly one to look at if you're going for some splash of color. Now, I didn't want to get into the world of micro brands on this list, but I do want to make kind of one exception with this independent-esque brand from Scotland, and that is Anordain. Now, the reason I want to make an exception here is because from a dial perspective, these guys do such an amazing job in terms of what they deliver best, and that is enamel dial. Now, enameling as a process is going to be complex to say the least, transitioning glass to metal and these very fine, thin surfaces that are also going to have a lot of just fluctuation in terms of the process and how actual the glass is going to react in that transition period. You're also dealing with high heat. We're talking 800 degrees in Celsius in terms of heat here. So there's a lot involved. One of the best representations of what the brand has to offer is their Fume line and their different dial colors. This one here that you're seeing is the plum version. So kind of has this nice gradient effect. The texturized surface, when you look up close, it has just kind of that natural creation that you're gonna have from enameling. And that's one of the beautiful things about this type of process. It's not made in a way where you're like looking for say perfection or or you're looking for something that's so standardized in terms of what the look is, there is kind of some fluctuation in terms of what is going to be packaged just because every single kind of these high intensity environments is gonna create a different output. And I think what Anderdain is doing with their enameling is it's really tough to beat in terms of this price range. I'm not really familiar with any brand that takes this much pride in their work of enameling at this price range. So just definitely wanna give them a mention in a video like this. So next up we have Oris, and I'm gonna look at two different Oris lines. One of them, you probably could have seen coming, uh, that would be the Oris Cotton Candy Edition Diver 65. Now these watches, as soon as they were released, I think you had basically two different sides or opinions that people were just kind of throwing out there. I either love these things or burn them at the stake. That was pretty much it. There was nobody in between. For myself, I'm a fan of them. I mean, in terms of what I'd actually be able to pull one off, I think that goes uh, in a totally different direction, but I think they're cool. I think for the right type of person and personality, these just are fun. Also, when you're complementing those pastel -y colors with the bronze cases, it just creates a very different visual dynamic that at the beginning kind of looks like a standardized bronze case, but as they patina and Oris cases do patina quite a bit more than I'd say some other bronze cases out there, like say like a Tudor Black Bay, uh, I think it just adds to the charm. Some people aren't gonna like this as much, but in terms of being different and being colorful, you have to mention these watches on a list like this. 
And another watch I wanna mention from Oris is a new watch that was just released, and that is the Oris Aquis Upcycle. So Oris is a brand that really ties themselves to initiatives around sustainability and just ocean conservation. And this is another watch that's in this arena and doing it in a very colorful way. So this is actually a dial that's made out of full PET plastic uh, that is recycled and it creates a very unique visual effect. Now this is certainly not gonna be for everybody just like the cotton candies, but it is truly unique on the market, also kind of tied to a nice cause as well. In addition to that, you're getting a ceramic bezel, also getting a variety of different uh, case options as well. So you're getting a small size at 36 and a half and a 41 and a half. Both of those cases, like every Aquas model in terms of its integrated style and how that bracelet's gonna meet the case, is gonna wear a bit smaller, so just keep that in mind. But these are probably the most unorthodox of any of the watches on this list, no question. Next up on our list, we have a watch from Nomos, an entry-level option from the brand, and one that certainly caught my eye when it was released earlier this year at Watches and Wonders, and that is with the Nomos Club Campus Orange. Now this is a watch that was released both in a gray version with some orange accents, and then you also had this full tilt version going into the orange, and I just think it looks fantastic. And the reason why I think this is a bit more of a compelling watch compared to maybe some other watches as we kind of ascend here, is it's still priced in a range that makes a ton of sense for I think some people out there that maybe want to get into a brand. $1,500 is certainly still a good chunk of change, but it's not in a ridiculous range where you can still kind of have some fun here and get a good watch in the process. So the Club Campus, I think is one of the best everyday options in this say sub $2,000 price range. You're getting some nice wearable dimensions. You're also getting 100 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, and you're also getting a Nomos Alpha manual caliber within, which is a movement that is made in house it is based off of kind of some inspired architecture from the Pazoo 7001, but Nomos had to create these movements in-house because they were just not able to get the production needed in order to produce their watches. So pretty nice to see a movement like this in this price category, and I just think it comes together with a really nice package. Another watch I want to mention from Nomos is the Nomos Ahoy Neomatic the Red Siren. So within the Ahoy collection, you do have some different sizing. The traditional Ahoy's are gonna be larger. Then you also have some of these Neomatics that are gonna be smaller at 36 millimeters. I've owned a Nomos Ahoy Neomatic, but I did not own this particular version. But if you're talking about colorful dials, this is probably going to be the most vibrant out there in terms of what Nomos is packing uh, with their entire collection. This red is piercing. The movement on the inside is a DUW3001. So this is an in-house movement from Nomos, also featuring their proprietary escapement, their swing system as well. So in terms of a finishing standpoint, as well as actually getting some of their proprietary components within their movement, uh, this is where you start getting into that next tier of their movement production. And it just simply looks fantastic. Some of the best finishing you're gonna find in a movement in this price category without question. But in terms of the dial, certainly colorful and whether or not you can pull it off, I'll leave that up to you, but certainly is going to fit the criteria of kind of making a statement when you have it on the wrist. So a brand I would not typically associate with colorful dials is Longines, but we are gonna look at one today with the Big Eye Titanium. So this is a newer creation for their collection, being classified as petroleum blue in terms of that dial color. And it just looks pretty eye-catching, especially when you get up close with the macro lens, the texturized surface, that blue, there's really not much else like this on the market, and I think it works very well with the muted titanium case. Now, in terms of wearability compared to the traditional Big Eye, it is going to wear a bit lighter because of that titanium, which is great. And then inside, you're also getting an amazing movement for the price, the L6885. So this is a automatic movement being created by Eta for Longines specifically. It's a column wheel movement as well. So in terms of a column wheel in this price range, this is for a Swiss made watch probably going to be one of the best propositions that you're gonna find. And in terms of a dial color, certainly different than the traditional big eye. If you want something conventional, I don't think you'd ever look at this one, but a bit different. And with that titanium case, creates a nice dichotomy there with the muted tones, with this more popping color of the dial. So next up here, we have the Grand Seiko SBGA 413. So this is the spring version of the Four Seasons collection that I've covered on the channel before. In terms of actual availability of these, these seem to be harder to get at this moment, but I just can't help but not mention these things because uh, they just, I think, are beautiful to look at. And one thing you're going to notice if you look at some of this footage is the pink compared to some photos out there is not really as prominent as some might suggest. It is 
understated, but also is enough where it creates a cool visual effect. With this watch, you get some of the standardized expectations in terms of attributes that you would expect from Grand Seiko. This watch does come with a 9R65 spring drive movement within, which I've went into great detail kind of covering in the past. 100 meters of water resistance, pretty wearable case as well compared to some other spring drive movements out there. And that texturized surface with that color is just a killer combination. Now, as of late, we've seen a bit more color being executed by many brands out there. And I think part of the reason for this is probably Rolex and just how well received some of these Oyster Perpetuals were a year ago and just kind of these pastel colors, they just work so well and they certainly should be mentioned on this list. Now, getting one is going to be a different story, but in terms of including it on a list like this, I think it makes a ton of sense. These are just fantastic looking watches all across the board. You have a variety to choose from. You're also getting the latest generation of movements with the Rolex 3130 calibers inside. And those are also going to come with an extended power reserve, which is also nice. But these are watches that don't really necessarily feel like Rolex at times. And I kind of like that, but I think a lot of other people like them too. And that's why they're kind of hard to get. Now, next up, we have two different watches that I think have a lot of shared attributes that I just want to kind of lump together in a way. And that is with the JLC Reverso Tribute, small seconds, and then also with the Mustang Cartiers. Now, both the Tank and the Reverso get paired up against each other quite a bit. And I think this is going to just always continue to happen. They're rectangular cases, they epitomize class, and it just makes a ton of sense to pair these watches together. Now, in terms of which one is more your flavor, I'm going to leave that up to you. But in terms of variety now, JLC and then also Cartier offer quite a few different options in terms of dial colors that are also fun. From the JLC side, I think the red burgundy is probably the most popping in color and it's probably the most different compared to all the lineup. You do have a green variant as well as a blue variant as well. But then when you go over to the Mustang Cartiers, you're getting a lot of the same type of flair uh, as well, a little bit more of an affordable price package too. So just keep that in mind. But I think both of these, if you're talking about a dress watch that epitomizes class, these are ones that you certainly could go for and have some fun in the process. Now for our last watch on this list, I wanna look at the Tag Heuer Monaco. Now, personally, this was a watch that I didn't fully appreciate for quite some time. I've tried it on in the past and it was a little bit of a crazy visual dynamic when I just tried this on. The dimensions are uh, very unorthodox and I think that really at the end of the day adds to the charm. There's a ton of history behind this piece, a lot of pop culture references and connection to this watch as well. And in terms of an embodiment of, I would say a true icon in watchmaking, this is something that is an unorthodox way of obtaining it. And I think that's why it made such a splash when the original was released. Tons of racing undertones, that mix of blue and red is just so well executed when you think it might be a little bit hard to do so. Factoring that in with a more square style case, not rectangle, but pretty much true square, it does create a very different type of feel on the wrist. But once your eyes adjust a bit, it is really fun to look at. It's a watch that goes against the grain, but also creates a nice sporty package that I think many people can still enjoy. But all right, guys, that is my list of some of the best colorful dials that you can find in 2021. What do you guys think of the list? If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Also, what watch would you choose in this list? And if it would be something else that I did not mention, I know I couldn't mention everything, please leave a comment down below so other people can just see other watches out there and they can just kind of get on their radar so they can just use that in their own research. Really would appreciate that as well. Also be sure to check out those new releases on teddybaldasar.com as well. Be sure to follow on Instagram so you can stay up to date with the content. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.